Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. So as we know, The Acolyte was cancelled after one season, but in recent days some new leaks have emerged claiming to be the original plot of what was going to be Leslie Headland's second season of the High Republic series. I want you to just know, these are not verified, but they do align with some of the original Acolyte's leaks and they do sound like they could be legit. Not that we're ever going to find out if they are because, as we know, there is not going to be a season 2. That being said, take this with a grain of salt, the news cycle has been pretty quiet on the Star Wars front, so I just thought we could have a bit of fun, go through some of the leaks and see what a second season could have given us. Before we get started though, it is worth pointing out, back on March 19th, before the first season even dropped, Leslie Headland in an interview did state she originally pitched multiple seasons to Lucasfilm. And when she pitched the story to Kathleen Kennedy, some of the season 2 ideas were given out. And when Leslie Helen was asked, if you do get a second season, how quickly could you make it? She said, quote, we can make it pretty quickly because we have a timeline and a lot of ideas for the second season. So while it's never going to see the light of day, Leslie did have some ideas. Let's dive into them. So the first reveal is that there is going to be a one year time skip. There's a cold open. Osha is being tested by Chimea. It's a gladiator type opening scene where Osha is being forced to fight in a battle arena on Tatooine, pretending to be enslaved by the Huts in order to win her freedom. The twist, as I said, is that this is all a Sith plan, part of Osha's training. Her objective is to assassinate the Hut. But for Chimea, it's a double whammy. He has his reasons for wanting him dead. And this kind of goes together with what Chimea told the Jedi when they were looking for Mei when he was posing as a smuggler. He has a dual identity and had run-ins with the Huts. In the second season, this was going to come full circle and the plan works, but Osha messes up and they're caught on camera escaping. Back on Coruscant, we cut to Mei, Osha's sister at the Jedi Temple. If you remember, she's been brainwashed. At this point, she's working as part of the Edu Corps and friends with one of Yoda's current Padawans, a Jedi in her mid-twenties known as Koli Balel and she's about to take on her trials. Vanestra and Yoda are both still actively involved with Mei, and they're quite protective. Yoda is a grandfather figure to her, so by the sounds of it, as was teased in the season finale, Yoda was going to have a bigger role in the next season. They say near the end of episode 1, there is a playful chess scene between Yoda and Mei, part recreation, part meditation and lesson. Then we go back to Chimea, like I said, he has a dual identity. He is a Sith, but also a representative of the banking clan, which further ties him to his Sith master, Darth Plagueis. They confirm the unknown planet was indeed Boldemnik from the expanded universe, and Chimea runs a mining operation there for the clan. By this point, Osha and Chimea have a relationship, and they're romantically involved. Osha doesn't like Chimea working for the banking clan, it's a distraction from his Sith ideology and goes against Osha's idea of freedom as a Sith. But he insists the money helps him give them freedom. At this point, he's also got a sarcastic admin droid known as Didi, who was written with Natasha Leone in mind. The originator of these leaks seems to have had a close connection with Leslie Headland to know about all of this, if they're true. Now, do you guys remember Raincore was about to do a full investigation of the Jedi? That is about to take place. He blindsides Vern with a ton of damning evidence in front of the Senate and an external review begins. All Jedi rank of night and above have to have all of their activities audited. One dangling question is how we got this information, leading viewers to believe there is more to Rancor than we thought. Who is he secretly working with? The final scene in the episode is a training sequence with Chimera and Osha. During this, we see an emotionally charged montage with visions of both of their pasts. We see Chimea's time as a Jedi, training under Venestra, and hints at how his relationship with the Jedi soured. They part the water separating the landing pad and Chimea's island using the Force, walking through like Moses. They also say there is some Moana influence on this, and the final shot is of the two characters kissing as the water crashes back into place. A modern take on From Here to Eternity's iconic scene. Now I'm not gonna lie, some of this sounds like a logical continuation of the first season, some of it does sound pretty cool, 
but once more as with the first season, doesn't sound like my flavour of Star Wars. Although the lightsaber sequences do sound really awesome, and it would have been nice to see the scummy underworld of the High Republic, the Hutts during this time, and the mysterious Briggo the Hutt, the supposed slaver in charge, Gladiator vibes, Dune 2 vibes, and ultimately, while these are not verified, I really wouldn't be surprised if they're true. The Chimera stuff sounds a lot like some of the early leaks for the first season, but were hinted at, such as Chimera's dual identity, and an exploration of it. There is no doubt the most important aspect of this first episode is setting up for Nestor and Yoda. I know we're getting prequel stories for the Acolyte, and some of this, including Chimera's flashbacks, could be a part of them. But seeing those on screen would definitely have been more interesting, but it sounds like they didn't really want to do much with Darth Plagueis, at least not in the premiere. I would say it's an overall improvement to the first season, but the focus on romance doesn't really captivate me as a viewer. As you guys know, I really wanted a Sith driven show, not just their passions, but their philosophy and brutality. So with this in mind, if we take a look at some of Leslie Headland's comments on the second season, she said this, I have a lot of ideas, a lot of stuff that I told Kathleen Kennedy early on, in terms of where I want the season and seasons to go, the conflicts I see happening, especially in the second season, and this comment lines up with the leaks, the fact Osha and Chimera are together, but have a lot of personal issues, a lot of stuff to work through. Same thing with Mei in the Edu Call. Even though she had her mind wiped, is she gonna snap? Is she prone to the dark side? Leslie said, But I've been working non stop for a very long time. I have a lot of ideas. I'm taking a much needed break before I get into the writer's room again, and I'd like to see how the show performs. Well, I guess that comment aged very badly because a second season isn't happening at this point. She says, Viewers will be interested in seeing where this goes. But again, it's worth reiterating, she always envisioned the first season as its own thing. There are cliffhangers with Plagueis and Yoda, and as you can see from the leaks, those were going to be explored at a later date, but they were anything but essential in the first season. Just kind of a throwaway fan service. She said, with Star Wars, you're dealing with very heavy issues. I think taking a break is good. I have a lot planned for season two. Ideas I gave Kathleen. I definitely pitched it as a multi-season show. There are a lot of things at the end of this season I think are narrative threads that are not tied up, but I'm the type of writer that is not interested in an emotional cliffhanger. I want you to feel like you've had a particular type of catharsis and an emotional experience in watching those eight episodes. When she was asked if she has any scripts, she said yes, she can make the second season pretty fast. She had a three season timeline and a plan for where things were headed. This was meant to be a bigger story than fans realized, and it's a big loss for Lucasfilm, because they wanted this to replace The Mandalorian as the flagship show. This was meant to be the next big Star Wars thing, and I guess it wasn't. Leslie said the writer's room was very happy with the show, with the way the first season turned out. They worked hard, she says. And you know, I didn't like the show, you guys know this, and I don't doubt, despite the way the show turned out, there was a lot of work that went into it. It's just, I didn't like the writing, I didn't like the direction, I didn't even like the way the show looked. And while I'm curious about the way a second season would have turned out, it still doesn't really entice me. But what do you guys think of the leaks we covered? Let me know your thoughts on them in the comments down below. Like I say, they're not particularly reliable, but we'll never really know if they're true. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. Check me out on social media, at StarWarsMeg1 on Twitter, and my Patreon is linked down below. But until the next one, my dear friends, may the Force be with you, always.